UNICEF report on child health on a social disadvantage on a particular section of the society. This is what the universal pattern that the UN report on child health has pointed out about the child health in any nation. This social disadvantage is linked not only to the wealth but also to the ethnicity, education, rural urban divides among other factors. One of the most important lessons learned from the efforts so far in regard to improving the child health and the maternal health is that the approaches focusing on overall progress will not basically eliminate the disparities altogether. These disparities, in fact, it is pointed out that they leave the poorest women and the children at the highest risk in the society or the nation. While even the poorest countries have achieved considerable progress, inequities still persist. In terms of child survival, the absolute gap has substantially narrowed, of course, since 1990. But the fact is that the great inequities still remain between the rich and the poor countries. Now let us see the current situation of child health as pointed out in the United Nations report on the child health. According to the United report, the child death at birth is still enormous. For approximately 1 million children in 2015 died at birth itself. Globally, the neonatal mortality rate that is probability of dying during the first 28 days of life itself however is declining it is declining however less rapidly than the mortality rate for children between one month and five years of age this in fact is a very alarming fact this means that the share of under five deaths occurring during the neonatal period is increasing in 2015, neonatal deaths accounted for 45% of total deaths, that is 5% more than the figure in 2000. This rising share of deaths in the neonatal period, in fact, reflects the faster decline in the mortality of children aged between 1 to 59 months than of the newborns. It is stated that as many as 6 million under 5 deaths occurred in 2015. That is almost half were caused by infectious diseases and conditions such as pneumonia, diarrhea, malaria, meningitis, tetanus, measles, sepies and also AIDS. Pneumonia and diarrhea, however, remain a leading causes of death in the three regions with the highest under 5 mortality, that is, the Eastern and South Africa, South Asia and Western Central Africa. Unfortunately, the India also figures in this list. The burdens of death disease and mortality are often highest among the most disadvantaged in the sub-Saharan Africa. Newborn deaths account for about one-third of the deaths of children under the age of five. In regions with the lower levels of child mortality, new natural deaths comprise approximately 50% of the total. South Asia, on the other hand, has both high overall child mortality and also high share of new natal deaths. In 2015, about 80% of the deaths occurred in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa and almost half occurred in five countries, that is, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ethiopia and even India. India also figures here and also Nigeria and Pakistan. Children living in fragile states and conflict affected countries face higher risks of life. Children born in sub-Saharan Africa are 12 times more likely to die than their counterparts in the high income countries that is before their fifth birthday itself. The same situation as in 1990. Now, a child born in Sierra Leone in West Africa, for example, today is about 30 times more likely to die before the age of five than a child born in the United Kingdom. 
for the women in sub sahara africa face 1 in 36 lifetime risk of mortality this figure is compared to 1 in 3300 in high income countries the lifetime risk in chad in african country is 1 in 18 To summarize the highlight of the United Nations report on child health it is summarized that globally the access to land credit and property rights has a great impact on the child survival prospects marginalized groups living in informal settlements illegal dwellings and urban slums are more vulnerable to health threats because of the overcrowding unsanitary conditions high transportation cost discriminatory practices and lack of access to basic services these are the obvious reasons everywhere these factors also create barriers to demand factors this impedes the initial and continued use of services by the most disadvantaged section of the population when combined with low rates of immunization this situation explodes with the transmission of diseases such as pneumonia diarrhea measles and tuberculosis The United Nations report also brings in the fact of impact of climate change on the child health of a nation. The climate change brings a added risks obviously with the increasing climate change factors. When water becomes scarce because of drought, the poorest children and families are most likely to resort to unsafe water sources. making them more vulnerable to diseases such as cholera and diarrhea climate change is also associated with increased incidence of vector borne infections diseases such as malaria as well as with food insecurity rising air pollution diarrheal diseases and malnutrition sanitation continues to be one of the most important factor the inadequate drinking water sanitation and hygiene accounted for around 1000 under 5 deaths per day the use of unimproved sanitation facilities and specifically the prevalence of the open defecation are the biggest factors in stunting the growth of child because these factors expose children to health problems that can interfere with the normal growth The progress on sanitation has been slow in many countries and however there are encouraging indications that more rapid progress is possible for example our own case of India in countries like India and Nepal there is a strong movement that is going on to construct toilets in rural areas it has taken a form of a social movement for sanitation it has mobilized social communities and civic authorities and is creating a open defecation free districts across the country such initiatives have the potential to generate large returns for the child survival This has a visible and immediate results in the reduction in diarrhea related deaths of children under age 5 and further reduction in child stunting in open defecation free communities. Child pride this is a, another important social factor which has affected the child health as a whole in many countries even India figures in this list. Around the world child brides are less likely than the adult women to receive adequate medical care while they are pregnant the lack of care and the fact that the girls are not physically mature enough to give birth put both mothers and their babies at risk there are complications during pregnancy and the childbirth are the second leading cause of death for girls between the age of 15 and babies born in to mothers under the age of 20 are 1.5 times more likely to die during the first 28 days than babies born to mothers in their 20s or 30s it brings out one important fact that is when a woman is denied opportunities to manage her reproductive health she and her children also suffer 
Short birth spacing, for example, is a risk factor for a preterm birth and the limited access to contraception is the biggest barrier for the safe spacing of children. If women who want to avoid pregnancy and access to these methods, the unintended pregnancies could drop by 70%. Therefore, reducing the number of unintended pregnancies in turn could avert 60% of maternal deaths and 57% under 5 child deaths. Rural-urban divide or the rural-urban disparities is another important factor that the United Nations report has pointed out. The rural-urban divide also contributes to unequal chances of a child survival. The children born in rural areas are 1.7 times more likely to die before the age of 5 than children born in urban areas. Nutrition is another obvious factor. It is because half of all deaths of children under age 5 are attributable to undernutrition and large disparities exist in related indicators such as stunting. Stunting rates among the poorest children are more than double those among the richest in the West and Central Africa, where the progress on stunting has been slow. And in over one-third of the low-income countries, the gap between the richest and the poorest households in stunting reduction has been, in fact, widening. Another obvious factor the United Nations report has pointed out is the factor of household health and maternal education. Household wealth is one determinant of a child's chance to survive, but maternal education is also a very strong predictor. Across much South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa, children with mothers who received no education are almost three times as likely to die before the age of five as children of mothers with secondary education. Education enables, therefore, women to delay and space births, also secure access to maternal and child health care and seek treatment for children when they fall ill. If mothers achieved a secondary education, it is estimated 1.5 million fewer annual deaths of children under the age in the sub-Saharan Africa and as much as 1.3 million fewer deaths in South Asian countries. Now let us see the scenario of child health in India in a little more detail. The health of Indian children is no doubt improving but there is still a long way to go. There has been an improvement in almost all childhood health indicators, but India still has a long way to go to match the health facilities of other advanced nations. This is what is revealed by the data of the National Family Health Survey of 2015 and 16. India's under 5 age mortality is substantially worse, in fact, than the poorer neighbors like Nepal, Bangladesh, and Bhutan. Nepal has 35, Bangladesh is 38 and Bhutan has 33 as compared to the Indian figure of 41. India's infant mortality rate in fact has got reduced by 16 points over the last 10 years. That is 41 children below the age of 1 died per 1000 live births. In fact, it is down from 57 10 years back. India now still has the highest figure of 41 deaths per 1000 person and it is comparable to the poorer African island nations of Madagascar. India's infant mortality rate of 41 is still larger than the other poor countries as said before, that is Bangladesh, Nepal and African countries of Rwanda and Botswana. Further, India's under 5 mortality rate is 50 and this is substantially worse than its poor neighbors such as Nepal, Bangladesh and Bhutan. Although India has reduced the infant deaths by 48% in the last 23 years, it was 79 in 1992 to 93 and 41 in 2015-16, India is still far from 
the 2015 Millennium Development Goal that was set in consultation with the United Nations of infant mortality rate of 27 that is united nations standard of infant mortality rate was set at 27 as against the india's present rate is 48 and this has been pointed out by a latest report by india spend in january 2017 further one of the notable feature in india is that there is a large difference among states for example, Chhattisgarh has the highest infant mortality rate of 54. Madhya Pradesh is the highest under 5 mortality rate that is 65 in the country. But however, Kerala infant mortality rate is hardly 6 that is under mortality of 5. Whereas Kerala has an infant mortality rate of only 6 and which is the lowest.